So the latest AMD graphics cards were just announced a few hours ago today, and these GPUs look very impressive, especially for those of us in the Linux world, because of course, Nvidia's drivers continue to be garbage. And the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So Nvidia, fuck you. But now it looks like the days of having to choose between underpowered hardware with better drivers and superior hardware with worse drivers is over because Big Navi actually gives the NVIDIA 3000 series cards a run for their money. I mean, just look at that chip. This Navi is a really big boy. Let's take a look at the specs first. This is a high level view for those of you that want to see these cards side by side. And now we're going to get deeper into the specs of the individual cards. At the low end, we have the 6800, which despite being the entry level card, still supports 60 compute units, a 1.8 gigahertz clock speed with a boost clock up to 2.1 gigahertz, a 128 megabyte infinity cache, and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, all crammed into a card that uses 250 watts of total power and is priced at $579. Now, gaming-wise, how does this compete with the RTX 3000 series? It doesn't. AMD didn't even bother making a comparison between this card and Nvidia's latest cards, but this is kind of understandable since this is the budget option. AMD did do a gaming comparison between this card and the 2080 Ti though, and the results were pretty impressive. According to this chart, the 6800 beats NVIDIA's last-gen champion in all of these games, some by as much as 20%. Now, I'll remind you here, and probably multiple times throughout the video, don't take these performance charts as gospel. The only thing that we can really know for sure of right now are the specs and the performance. Manufacturers, they tend to have a way of exaggerating their benchmarks a little bit during their announcements. But spec-wise, this does mean that it beats a 2080 Ti in everything but the size of its memory bus. But the fact that this card packs in almost 50% more VRAM and 40% more boost clock is probably going to guarantee the 6800 a win in independent gaming benchmarks. Next is the card that people will probably be more interested in, the 6800 XT. This card also comes with a 256-bit memory interface. It has 72 compute units, a 2 GHz base clock, and a 2.25 GHz boost clock, 16 GB of GDDR6 memory, and this is all packed into a card that uses 300 watts of board power. And it also costs $649. And since this card is less than $100 more expensive than the 6800, I'm predicting that this is the one that most folks are going to go for. This kind of reminds me of how Samsung switched up the Note series, where they have the Note Ultra, which is the phone that everybody wants, and then the regular Note, which is a bit cheaper, but you'd have to be pretty uninformed to actually go and buy it. Anyway, let's compare that to NVIDIA's 3080, which is what this card is supposed to compete with. Spec-wise, the 3080 wins with a wider memory bus at 320 bits. It also has GDDR6X VRAM, which is slightly better than the regular GDDR6 VRAM that we'll see on all of these AMD cards. But this is where the winning pretty much ends. The 6800 XT has 60% more VRAM and about a 30% higher clock speed. It consumes 20 watts less power and it's also $50 cheaper. And this is at the retail price since the 3080 was a bit of a paper launch because if you currently want to get one, you'll have to buy one from scalpers on eBay for as much as $1,000 or more in the case of the Founders Edition. So how does this actually translate to gaming performance, which is what you probably all really care about? Well, when it comes to FPS in 4K gaming, the 6800 XT is pretty much equal in most games, losing in a couple and winning in a couple. 
Now keep in mind that these charts are from the launch event and not independently tested, so there's a good chance that there is some embellishing going on here. On the flip side though, there aren't really any games that are optimized for these GPUs yet, but the technology that they are introducing seems very promising according to these game developers. I'm here to talk about Far Cry 6 and some of the new technologies we've been collaborating with AMD on to make our game the most immersive and beautiful Far Cry ever. We've been working together to take full advantage of the new Radeon RX 6000 series and our DNA 2 architecture for best possible experience. We've been very impressed by AMD's latest tech and joined forces to bring Fidelity FX CAS, DXR ray tracing, and variable ray shading to Far Cry 6. We're using VRS Tier 2 to use Compute Shader to generate a control texture which analyzes the luminance and gives us control at an 8x8 tile level as to what shader rate we're going to be using. This enables us to render much more quickly but keep the same quality level. We're excited to team up with great partners like AMD to bring some new features to World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is built on a custom engine using the DirectX 12 Ultimate API. Another great feature on the RX 6000 is DXR ray tracing. Here you can see ray tracing evident and how the shadows are interacting with your character. What you're seeing involves incredibly complex computations on the RX 6000. This is a level of realism that hasn't been possible until recently. The RDNA 2 architecture and the Radeon 6000 series allowed us to introduce some of the latest DirectX 12 Ultimate technologies into our engine. Real-time ray traced shadows allow us to introduce additional shadow casting lights into the scene that provide much more uh, immersion and detail into the world. But Nvidia still has the throne at the high end, right? The rich PC gamers who can afford any component they want are always going to go for an NVIDIA Titan, or in this case, a 3090, because AMD has never been able to make anything to compete with NVIDIA at the high end, right? Right? AMD is also launching a 6900 XT, which is their response to the 3090. This card is pretty much a slightly beefed up 6800 XT. It has 80 compute units, the same base and boost clocks, same 16 gigs of VRAM, and it pulls in the same 300 watts of power. And this card is also supposed to be the same physical size as the 6800 XT and the 6800. So we shouldn't see a significant size jump and space constraints in our cases like we get with the 3090. And this card is priced at $1,000. Now, despite the nearly identical specs, the only real difference being eight more compute units, AMD is claiming that the 6900 XT can hold its own against the RTX 3090. So how could this possibly be? Well, apparently it has to do with their Rage mode, their Smart Access Memory, which is a technology incorporated into all of their cards, as well as the Infinity Cache, which is also incorporated into all three of these cards. So what is this all about? Well, the Smart Access Memory feature will boost gaming performance by enhancing data transfers between the CPU and the GPU, essentially giving each of them full access to each other's memory, which maximizes the data transfer performance between the two. But there's a catch here. You're going to need to have a Ryzen 5000 processor and a 500 series motherboard to take advantage of this. There's also the new Infinity Cache, which is built into all of their GPUs. It has redesigned the data paths to maximize performance while minimizing data movement and power consumption within the GPU. AMD says that the Infinity Cache equates to more than doubling of the bandwidth. In fact, it's a 117% increase at 10% lower power than traditional memory. Naturally, pairing up that large cache with the smart memory access feature is going to yield big throughput benefits. And surprisingly, AMD tells us that the Infinity Cache is based upon the Zen CPU's L3 cache design, which means that it comes as the fruits of AMD sharing innovations between its CPU and GPU teams. 
This is a distinct advantage that they have over both NVIDIA and Intel since AMD is a menu manufacturer of both CPUs and GPUs. Rage mode is not quite as impressive a technology for enthusiasts though, but it is important for noobs. It is essentially a one-click overclocking feature that is going to be built into their GPU software. Now that I've gotten you hyped about Big Navi, it's time to lay some disappointments on you. During this announcement, AMD did not show any DirectX ray tracing performance numbers, which is the hot new thing that the gamers all enjoy. And they're still working on a technology to compete with NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling. There is hope for this though. We know that AMD has implemented hardware on their GPUs to handle ray tracing. We know that the next gen consoles are going to sport AMD graphics and both Sony and Microsoft have claimed that their consoles will support ray tracing. Also, those game developers that you saw earlier, they claimed that AMD's cards would be assisting them with things in the future like ray tracing. And as far as DLSS goes, this is something that I'm pretty sure can be implemented in software. So hopefully AMD put some hard work into their drivers to make that possible. All in all, I'm very pleased with this announcement that AMD made. It looks like AAA gaming has finally come to Linux without the need to deal with Nvidia's proprietary drivers. I can't wait to see independent benchmarks of these cards to see if they really do beat NVIDIA's respective 3000 series cards in performance. And hopefully AMD actually has a decent supply of these cards, so they don't just instantly go out of stock for weeks and weeks on end like the NVIDIA cards did. We'll have to wait until November 18th to see when the 6800 and 6800 XT are supposed to be available. And then three weeks later, the 6900 XT should be available on December the 8th. If Lisa Sue's words hold true, I'll definitely be consuming one of these cards. How about you?